Serenity. My name is Sarah and I talk all about tea here. I'm back with another T2 review for Pumping Pomegranate. This is a fruit tisane. The way they describe this tea is the essence of the Grand Bazaar Istanbul. A sweet, tangy, and mystical flavor. This tea will take you on a flavor journey with its many surprises. This one is loose leaf, so I will need an infuser. I'm using my Kitchen Kite see-through double-walled glass mug again. Loving this mug. Let's see what this tea smells like. Ooh, very nice. Very, very sweet and fruity. I will pour this out for you so you can see it up close and get it to focus. Not on my face, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, oops, losing some. A lot of fun stuff to this tea. I like big teas. I mean, I know they're heavier and everything, but still worth it to me. The tea dust has stuck to the lid. That is okay. Brewing instructions call for rolling boil three to five minutes. So let's get this steeping right away. Oh my. Pretty color already. That's awesome. Well, while we watch this beautiful tea steep, we will go over the ingredients here. It contains apple, hibiscus, rose hips, elderberry, natural and artificial flavoring, and pomegranate seeds. So when I was younger, I didn't know what pomegranates were. I had never seen them before. And I was walking through the graveyard and I saw like a opened up pomegranate sitting in the nook of one of the headstones. And I thought it was an apple with teeth in it. I was like super creeped out and disturbed and I may have texted everyone telling them what I saw. <laughs> Only years later to actually see a pomegranate as an adult and to realize, okay, that wasn't a toothy apple. It was a pomegranate. <laughs> Why it was in a graveyard, I, I don't know. <laughs> this tea is steeping up a really beautiful color. I wonder what's causing that. It must be the hibiscus, maybe the elderberries as well. I really like elderberries in tea. I think they give a really kind of nice berry flavor without being overpowering like some berries can be. I want to grow elderberries, but they have very, very poisonous leaves. And we have, of course, a toddler running around, so not really quite worth the risk. One thing I'm really appreciating about tea too is the fact that they are not filling all of their teas with stevia. <laughs> Stevia is a very controversial ingredient, I would say. I don't mind it most of the time, but every now and then a tea will have it and it will just taste flippin' weird to me. Like it'll leave the worst aftertaste. I tried some matchas once that were sweetened with stevia and at first I didn't mind them, but then later on I couldn't even complete them. I gave them to my mom. I don't think she finished them either. They might be back in my tea collection again. I actually took all of her teas. <laughs> I did a gigantic tea sort not too long ago, so. I need to do my tea collection video. I keep saying that. It's just a little bit daunting because I have so much. And then I have like a row of boxes upstairs that I need to film unboxings for. And I'm like, I can't film the tea collection until I have all my tea unboxed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this called for three to five minutes. I'm just over four minutes into my steep. I'm gonna taste it now. I'm actually on my lunch break, so I'm running low on time and I don't want to have to rush this. And I have a meeting that I've got to go into. All right, let's see what this tea smells like. It smells like hot juice, <laughs> kind of like fruity and juicy. It smells nice. Let's see what it tastes like. Hmm, It's tart. It's more like earthy than I was expecting. Kind of like how cranberry juice can kind of be that way. I know that's probably not the right explanation, but you know if you get like a more natural cranberry juice that doesn't have a whole bunch of sugar, how it's got almost like an earthy tart flavor to it on top of being like berry fruit vibe. That's kind of what I'm getting here. Hmm, It's really nice. You can kind of get the pomegranate. I'm definitely getting the elderberries in there. The hibiscus is coming through with a tartness. I'm, I'm fairly certain that's the hibiscus. So when I smelled this, I was really expecting it to be a sweet tea. I wouldn't call this a sweet tea. I wouldn't necessarily call it a tart tea either because it's not like pucker or anything, but there is a tartness to it. It's really nice. I'm definitely gonna finish off this mug. It was the right amount of steep time. I probably could have gone longer if I wanted it to be like more full bodied in texture. I can see this being a really, really nice tea concentrate base for a cocktail. As I sip through this, I'm catching more of the tartness on the back end of my tongue. It kind of tastes like a little bit of a sour berry. 
It's not what I was expecting. I was kind of expecting sweet. I could add honey to it, but I don't really want to because I kind of feel like that would take away from the intention behind this tea. That's just me though. It could be good that way. Mm. Well, that is it for my review. Would I repurchase this tea? Mm. I might, not in like huge quantities, but maybe I would try it as an iced tea or as a tea concentrate for a cocktail or maybe even as a teapot using a buble. So many flavors of that now. <laughs> Again, I can't remember if I said this at the beginning of the video. I got this sample from Diana Talks Tea, so thank you, Diana. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Time to get to work!